Monday this week saw the Yokozuna Council pass judgment on Tetano Fuji, who has pulled out of five of this year's six tournaments. We don't intend to warn him just yet, said Council Chief Mr. Yamauchi, but it would be a tremendous shame if we do not see him in January. Should that transpire, we have agreed to issue a comment then. But as for whether that comment translates into one of our official proclamations, call to action, warning, or recommended retirement, we haven't yet concluded. For the moment, we rest content with observing how things progress, while eagerly awaiting his return to the ring, having conquered his injury woes. It's clear that the lengthy absences in recent years of Hakuho, Kakuryu, and Kiseno Sato have figured in the council's thinking. Teru's case at present does not seem unusual and is rather accepted as a natural byproduct of modern heavyweight sumo wear and tear. All indications are that Teru no Fuji will be in the January ring. Let's see what he does on next month's tour. But why has he not retired already? is the question that rages still. Let's come back to that at the end. The council also pronounced on title winner Kirishima. His championship feat was both brave and dignified, Chairman Yamauchi said. Should he capture the January trophy too, we would positively think about his promotion. The Ozeki himself, in Monday morning's press conference, gave us more details about that triumph. When I saw I was facing Atami Fuji on day 14, I called my wife and said, if I win, come down for the final day. He told us, thereby revealing how crucial he thought that bout was. I thought about calling them down to Osaka in March. But as I wasn't even sure I'd reach a playoff that day, I was worried they'd travel all that way for nothing. So I abandoned the idea. Hence it was extra special to have my daughter pose with me and the trophy this time. Much more of this in future, please. Finally, it seems, his three-year-old girl will support him more than Uda or Takakesho, her previous favourites. The holders of the rank he pursues next time he refers to as godlike. I don't want to be obsessing over Yokozuna during next tournament though, he added, but it would be nice to achieve one of my dreams. And although he said not in so many words, before his master retires in April. The Kirishima Distilleries, who sponsored one of his aprons this time, clearly join him in that wish. One of Kirishima's mentors, Kakuryu, assessed the title win as follows. With the Yokozuna absent this time, there was no wall-like presence at the top of the chart challenging everyone else to smash them down. Kirishima therefore resolved to become that wall, saying, If you hit me, so long as I hold firm, I'll be winning this bout. He's finally showing us what he can do. Getting injured as soon as he made Ozeki was surely tough, but also a learning experience. It's like he really wanted to erase that pain this time round. He really built himself up for the task with all those pre-meet practice bouts. He's looking more solid in the ring, driving forward with more menace, and cutting out those risky throws. All I'd urge him to do for now is look at those two defeats this time and work out how to invite less pressure. Other than that, he's fine. One of those not celebrating though was embattled Ozeki Horshoryu, a rival from childhood days. His title win is a tough one to take, Shoryu said after ending on 10 and 5. I'll get training promptly again and set my sights firmly on that January Cup. Now back to the Teru no Fuji conundrum. 
I can't imagine he still has the will to keep pushing that broken body of his to Yokozuna level, said Takatoriki on YouTube last week. But without having permanent elder stock, he's reluctant to call it quits, he continued. Now that came as a surprise to me, for even if Teru retired today, he'd be given five years to secure that stock. Why would he still not feel at ease? Is he somewhat shaken by what's happened to Kakudu, still without permanent stock after almost three years of searching? Was he secretly coveting Magaki, only to be gazumped by stable insider Ishiura? Did he desire Kiriyama, only for Takarafuji, as stable senior, to be given first refusal? It now appears he's got it, according to recent tabloid reports. Or is the one stock he really wants, his master's Isegahama, set to be seized by Hakuho some 20 months from now, in a bid to lead the entire stable group? Something doesn't quite add up. All we can say for certain right now is that no agreement is in place for Isegahama to hand over stock and stable to Tetono Fuji when he hits 65 in July 2025. Isegahama seemingly wants to stay on until 70 and swap his stock with someone else's. Most likely that of current assistant coach Tateyama, but possibly that of coach Miyagino. To be even considered for that swap deal, Terunofuji must buy permanent stock within the next 20 months. Temporary Yokozuna stock cannot be swapped. Is that then what he's still holding out for? He's a man of means guaranteed by both rank and family background. His business acumen's not in doubt. He ran his own company at 16. Surely he can call on that now to negotiate and buy his way out of physical hell. For if he can't, something else must be at play.